Hello community! Today is something completely different. I'm going to talk about which product should you buy. OpenAI or GitHub? Because Microsoft invested, you know it is, more than $10 billion in OpenAI, owns a major part of OpenAI, and Microsoft bought GitHub five years ago, so it's 100% ownership. Great! Seven months ago. It all started here when GitHub released here its vision, Copilot X. So Microsoft GitHub shared its vision for the future. Today, for me today, we have here our GitHub Universe opening keynote. And as you can see, we have here the GitHub Copilot chat. Isn't that beautiful? And now it is not just a code completion GitHub Copilot, but now you can chat with it. And it is upgraded to GPT-4. And you might say, my goodness, GPT-4. So now Microsoft GitHub announces GPT-4 in its Copilot. And of course, there's something beautiful. If you look at this, Thomas tells us, hey, our enterprise customer would love to have their internal corporate knowledge of their companies in their Copilot implementation. And they offer here a new product, Copilot Enterprise. So if you are an enterprise and you have paid for the enterprise packet and you have the enterprise add-on, now you can have an additional enterprise Copilot just for 40 bucks per user per month in your corporation. And you know what you can do? Yes, it will be available in February 2024. What you can do is you can fine tune your code LLMs. Now, isn't that fascinating? Have a look at this. I have you here the link to the YouTube. Here's the time index. Please verify because you have to verify everything you see at the internet. Now, this new service to fine tune here a coding LLM, a copilot, is interesting because we also have the new GPT 4 code interpreter. And the copilot is now upgraded to GPT 4. So, which product should you buy? To answer this on a completely different level, I show you how to fine tune your own code pilot. And in my video of tomorrow, I will give you here detailed instruction. I will explain the complete theory and I will code with you everything absolutely from scratch. So at the end of this next two videos, Saturday and Sunday, you will know how to fully fine tune a code LLM on a distributed GPU node. You know how to use Loratude code LLM. We go for a Q Lora quantized Lora code LLM. And in upcoming part three, maybe in about two weeks' time, I show you how to use a multi lower tuned code LLM. So we do not only have code, we only have code and chat, like in the upcoming co-pilot here, beginning of 2024, but how you can integrate actions. Beautiful. Now, three days ago, something happened. And you know what? It was OpenAI Developer Day. And here we see here the new idea that GPT-4 fine tuning is now available for certain global players in an experimental access program. So if you're really rich, this is the program for you. But there was also another announcement. Look here. Is that, hey, today we're launching a new pro program called Custom Models. So this is really for the ultra rich global players because the OpenAI researchers will work closely with the company and will make, help them to make a great custom model based on the latest GPT, doing additional domain-specific free training. And you might say, hey, wait a minute. So we have here for the average company the fine-tuning of GPT on domain-specific data. We can apply fine-tuning. But we also have a pre-training of the original GPT-4 Super Turbo, Super Turbo X. Yes, you can imagine that this is not going to be cheap. But hey, if you are a global corporation, this will be a competitive advantage. But of course, since we have something for the ultra-rich companies, for the medium companies, there's also something for the very small companies, or for the private, for the masses. And they introduce their small little carved out jet GPTs and they call GPTs. And as you can see, you have here GPTs you can build on a very specific task. So very tiny little 
chat GPTs that only a particular part of knowledge is extracted and put in a little high performant domain specific GPT. We say here for origami expert or for garden, or if you want, just want to extract text, or if you want to have a joke, or if you want to have here a poker mentor, how to play poker. So very domain specific, tiny little GPTs, highly specialized, really tiny. And of course, the nice thing is we have an instruction base. We can have now augmented knowledge, so expanded knowledge. This is done by this GPT. You do not need anything at all, any helper, any plugin, nothing at all. And you can have actions. So if you want to buy your next train ticket, your next plane ticket, action is here a beautiful thing. And you can upload here to the GPT store that will be available on OpenAI platform. If you noticed, we have now talked about two platforms coming up based on community contribution by regular people. They have here their own GPT system. They can find in the store like an app store. And we have here also a community contribution for coder, for developers, for programmers, our traditional GitHub platform. Interesting, you might say. But you know what is the parent company who more or less owns them? Microsoft. So the strategy of Microsoft for 2024 is interesting, especially since they now stress the importance of this advanced Azure marketplace. So where should you buy? You have three possible marketplaces. Now, it is interesting. I, I thought about this. And this part of Microsoft called OpenAI, you have here an entity that builds here models, GPT-4, Turbo, 128 context lab, and GPT fine tuning, and the new GPT-4 code interpreter, and for selected companies, the fine tuning. On the other part of Microsoft that is called here GitHub, you have now the new Microsoft GitHub chat and the new Microsoft GitHub Enterprise Edition based on the GPT-4 model developed here by this other part of Microsoft called OpenAI. And for very special people, you can fine tune here this GPT-4 based Microsoft GitHub Enterprise Edition with your own corporate code data for your own corporate task, for your own corporate solution. Isn't this fascinating? So what you're going to buy now? You're going to buy to fine-tune a GPT-4 code interpreter, or you're going to buy to find code a GPT-4-based Microsoft GitHub Enterprise Edition. Interesting. Really interesting. So, look at this from a different perspective. What did the CEO of Microsoft say? That OpenAI builds, or will build, or can build, or should build, the best AI models. If GitHub Microsoft owns the co-development platform, where all these beautiful ideas, these grassroots ideas are come up. People say, hey, I create a new GitHub repo, and it is available here for the whole community, but not only for the community. So if you look at this from an innovation theory aspect, you see we have here this part of, of Microsoft develops a model. This part of Microsoft owns the network. And this part of Microsoft has the upcoming marketplace. And you might say, this makes sense. Because they develop a model based on the upcoming grassroots ideas here from all the new methods, code sequences that are published on this GitHub network. So they use here the knowledge to build a better model. But also you can use this model and build better applications you can publish on GitHub. So there is an interdependence here where you have an open source platform, GitHub, to build your secret corporate only models. And then you have the marketplace for this. I think from an innovation 
aspect. This is a really fascinating configuration that Microsoft designed. But now, let's look at a financial perspective. OpenAI needs to make money. So it has created now this marketplace, as I just showed you in their presentation. They say, hey, we will work with companies to create their own fine-tuned and maybe even pre-trained models for their corporate knowledge. So if you are the Bank of America or I don't know what, this will be beautiful for all your 100,000 to 100,000 employees. You can have now a personal AI system, a corporate AI system for all the tasks where all the knowledge of all the workers or all the staff in those corporations are now fed into an AI system. Interesting perspectives for the human workforce. On the other place here, GitHub tells you, hey, if you want to go to github.com and if you want to understand the code and you want to apply the model here that we have now on our platform, you can do this and you just have to pay the enterprise edition and this edition and the cloud edition and you get the idea. But of course, the main dominant force is the parent company. Microsoft has to increase its profit for its shareholder. This is the American system. So there's now an interesting problem. I know this is a pure mathematical optimization problem. How do you optimize the profit from three distinct marketplaces where the dynamic and the innovation stage of each marketplace is different? But if you think about it, it serves here more or less a huge community. And then I looked at those two presentations in the last three days. And in both presentations, the CEO of Microsoft entered the stage and presented here the vision for Microsoft, which was interesting because he had the first keynote speak from the OpenAI Developer Day. And I have you here the, <laughs> the sublines. So he says to OpenAI, we want to build our GitHub co-pilots. So from another company, from GitHub, all as developers on top of OpenAI's APIs. So he clearly says, hey, listen, you're part here of Microsoft called OpenAI. We want to use your models here for the GitHub Copilot in another company. Interesting. But then he said, look, I always think of Microsoft as a platform company. And this is where I started to understand what is the business strategy of Microsoft. It is a platform company. It is not an innovation-driven company. It is not a let's do some research company. It has chosen a very, very fine defined position here in the marketplace. And I think it's an excellent position to increase the profits, the corporate profits for Microsoft. And then he says, if things like the Asia marketplaces, he mentioned this in OpenAI. And he says, hey, just really the shape of Asia, the Asia marketplace, is drastically changed. And I think this is because of the success of the models of OpenAI and the success here of the GitHub contribution from the open source community. And he says, for Microsoft, our job, our number one, is to build the best system. And this was the second part where I thought, oh, now I understand the position of Microsoft. It is not to be here just on one leg, just the model development or the creation here of some community platform to build the best system. And they are not just focusing on the infrastructure side of their huge compute clusters, NVIDIA-based compute clusters. Because to manage those clusters, you need a lot of knowledge. It is extremely difficult. And those experts at Microsoft are really experts for being able to continuously maintain the system and let the system evolve. So he, says, he thinks that the whole corporation of Microsoft, the number one thing is to build the best system. And then he defines the other tasks. So that you, and he is looking now at OpenAI CEO, 
so that you can build the best models. But a model is just one part of a system. So if he is the system integrator, hardware and software and model and cooperation platforms and everything, you clearly see here now the strategic position of Microsoft. And I have to tell you, now suddenly I feel that I kind of understand Microsoft. And I was a little bit angry We've got Microsoft with more than 100,000 staff. And in the second presentation, just yesterday here, the GitHub Universe 2023 opening keynote, he says, that is our core heritage. We, as Microsoft, we are a platform company, right? And you can see this in his body language. We are a platform company. So he is a great system integrator. Hardware from NVIDIA GPUs or TPUs or models from OpenAI or cooperative platforms from GitHub. He is a system integrator. This is now an interesting perspective. What does this mean for our optimization problem? Does it mean in three to five years time, neither this company nor this company will have survived? Everything will be absorbed here in the parent company, and other companies will have taken their place here as the innovation input driver. Interesting, if you want to decide to buy a product or invest in anything that you like. Now, if you will look now only from the side of the innovation theory, okay, think about Professor Christiansen. The theory tells us more or less that the probability is such a global corporate system like Microsoft will not be a long-term investment. However, on the other hand, I have to tell you, Microsoft can potentially dominate the AI market and find itself in a favorable position to buy other complementary, competitive, high-flyer AI companies. So this is an absolute fascinating time to make your decision what system you would like to buy, given your specific task. But what I wanted to show you is the interplay that is going on currently. And there are some interesting decisions that will happen in the very near future. For example, if you want to think about this, what is the next acquisition target for Microsoft? Given those circumstances that I just mentioned, there is only one global player that would be essential for Microsoft's strategy in this second part. Can you guess what company this is? If you know it, please leave me a short comment in the description of the video. And I will answer this question in some days in my community tab. Great. So you had here a personal reflection after listening to two keynote speeches. I feel now a little bit better. I feel that I understand a little bit more the market dynamic, the new announcement that shows us what will come up here at the beginning of 2024 and how the EI market and the research market will develop in 2024.